communication and building connections. Have you ever met someone new and been at a complete loss for what to say? Do you dread the feeling of a conversation with a long lull in it? Many people go about starting conversations in the wrong way, and it will begin by asking questions about a person. They might ask what they do for a living, or even what their favorite band is. Some people even struggle with this with their own friends, and will ask the question, what's new? For many of us, a lot of the time the answer is not much. Very few of these questions will lead to a natural flowing conversation. We feel the need to get to know someone well, or to know the latest goings on in their lives. But to be honest, these are things that you can just as easily get from a social media feed. So what might be a better question? Well, how about this simple classic? How was your day? This makes the conversation instantly relevant, recent, and casual. What's more is that it will often result in many more small details that can then be expanded on. If you had a bad day, why? Do they not like work? How long has it been like that? Another tip for making conversation is to always actually listen to what the person has to say, and then to look for these opportunities to expand the conversation and keep it going. The little conversations. Don't just focus on making conversation with people that you are trying to impress. Recognize the importance of also making conversations with the other people in your life. For instance, when you are greeted by your taxi driver or waiter, how do you respond? Most of us don't have time to dive into deep conversation, but what can be nice is just to ask them how they are or how their day is going. You never know who you might meet or who you might impress. And if you work in the service industry or any customer-facing role, to make sure that you are doing this and that you are making use of every opportunity to make conversation, to wish someone a good day, and to smile. Have you ever been served in a store by someone who didn't once look up from what they were doing? This is a horrible feeling and one that makes you feel almost used by the business. But moreover, you normally don't think very highly about that person. No, they probably hate their job which is why they're acting the way they are. But what they don't realize is that they are turning down opportunities for progression, for great references, for self-development. Even if you hate your work and you're in a dead-end position, you should still put all your effort into doing it to the best of your ability. And that especially includes treating others in the right way. Building rapport and going deeper. How do you go about building rapport with someone or becoming someone's friend in a short space of time? The common advice for the former is to try and echo body language. That means that you take up a similar stance to the person you want to build rapport with. You nod when they nod, and you try to use similar vocabulary and dialect. This can work, but it can also backfire if you aren't a practiced salesman. It can feel manipulative and weird when it becomes transparent, and ultimately, it doesn't build real relationships. What will happen to make a relationship more real is to take the conversation a little deeper. When meeting a new big client recently, who I knew travels a lot, I asked them how their partner responded to them being away from home a lot of the time. They really opened up, and they let me know that they had actually just come from an argument with their other half, and that they were currently really struggling with it. Likewise, you can ask someone what their grander ambitions are for their work, or you could ask them what their proudest achievement is. Of course, there is a time and a place for this. But opening up helps you to build a deeper connection. Just be ready to open up yourself, too. People feel vulnerable letting others get close in this way. But if you can expose some sensitive facts of your own, too, then it will help to make the conversation feel more balanced and fair. Another strategy is to try and share a moment with someone. An ideal way to do this is to have a fun night out together, to go on a journey, or to engage in something else that is unusual, memorable, and bonding. But it can also be something much smaller and simpler. Got a new drink you've yet to try? Why not suggest that you try it together? Or how about playing a prank on someone together? Small moments like this can make you a team and give you a joint experience that can be very bonding. The Art of Communication Communication is one of the very most important tools at your disposal when it comes to business friendships, romance, and more. Communication is what gives you the ability to get across your point of view, to let others know how you're feeling, to let others know your intent, and to be understood. If you lack communication skills, then even the greatest intentions and strategies can fall apart. 
The basic goal of communication, then, is to get a message across and do this in the most efficient manner possible. That normally means you're looking to respond quickly with as few words as possible. Good communication means clearly getting your message across in an efficient way. This is what confuses a lot of people who think that good communication should involve flamboyant language and big words. How do we reconcile these two points? The reality is that language should never be used to show off how big your vocabulary is. However, what a large vocabulary allows you to do is to convey your message in even fewer words often. Reconcile versus get these points to work together. And with more nuance. Different words with similar meanings often provide slightly different tones, slightly different expressions. This allows you to do all the things we've communicated so far, such as better adopting your presentation to the audience at hand, or better complimenting the people you're speaking with. Action points Keep conversation simple and address current concerns. Let conversation flow naturally. Listen to the other person and expand on their points. Communicate in a succinct manner. Use vocabulary to add flavor. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.